Welcome back to the Comfort Food Series. Today, we're gonna make the nostalgic, the classic chocolate treat, also known as Nutella. It's super simple and way better than the store-bought nonsense. So with that said, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is preheat the oven box. Set the temp to 400 Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius. Next, grab a half sheet tray and add two cups or 240 grams of hazelnuts. You can use skinless or skin on hazelnuts, either or will work. Once the oven is hot, gently toss the pan in the heated box. Place the pan on the middle rack of the oven for the best results. We'll toast the hazelnuts anywhere from six to eight minutes or until the skins become darker in color and start to split and fall off. Watch them closely because this process is fast and they will burn easily. After the timer has gone off, pull the little nutty things out of the oven. Let them ever so slightly cool for about two to three minutes before we move on to the next step. Once they've hung out for a few and are warm to the touch, transfer the hazelnuts over to a clean kitchen towel. Rub, shimmy, and shake the hazelnuts nuts with a towel. Doing this will help peel most of the skins off of them. I found that it's easiest to peel them when they are still slightly warm. Some of them will be really stubborn and the skins won't come off no matter how hard you work to get it off. You can still use them if there are skins on them. We just want the majority of them peeled. If you don't feel like doing this extra work, you can always use hazelnuts that are pre-peeled. You'll still want to roast them for a little bit so we can get that roasted flavor. In the end though, this is what you should be left with. Now that you've worked harder than you have in a while, grab a small holding device and a fine mesh strainer. The first thing we'll add to the bowl is one third cup or 35 grams of powdered sugar. Following that, we'll add a quarter cup or 25 grams of unsweetened cocoa powder. I went with Dutch processed cocoa powder, which will give us a darker look and a different flavor profile compared to regular cocoa powder. Use your favorite type or what you have on hand and sift everything together and push through any clumps that are left behind. This step is totally extra, but this will help ensure we end up with a smooth texture in the end. Grab yourself a machine that spins a blade like a blender or a food processor. To the device, add the roasted and peeled hazelnuts. Let it rip and start to blend the hazelnuts. This process will take a few minutes to reach the desired consistency we're looking for. We want a smooth hazelnut paste. Should have the consistency of a thick peanut butter by the time we're done. Throughout this entire process, stop and scrape down the sides and the bottom of your food processor to help ensure everything gets blended. In the end, this is what we're looking for, is something like this. Once we've reached this point, we can add our cocoa powder and powdered sugar. I did this in two sets. I added about half of the mix and gave it a quick mixer and then added the last half and blended it until everything was fully incorporated in. Following those two ingredients, we'll add in one and one half teaspoons of vanilla extract. Blend that until just mixed in. The last thing we need to add to the food processor is two to three tablespoons of a neutral tasting oil. I went with some avocado oil. You can also use hazelnut oil to really drive home that nutty flavor. Once you have the oil in the processor, blitz until it's incorporated with the other ingredients and has become super smooth in texture. Depending on the consistency and thickness you're looking for, use whatever amount of oil you wish. I wanted mine a bit thinner, so I used the three tablespoons. If you want something fairly thick, only use two tablespoons. Now that you've accomplished your desired thickness, give it a quick taste test and adjust the sweetness level as needed. Mine tasted a little too healthy, so I ended up adding about another quarter cup or 25 grams of powdered sugar to slightly bring up the sweetness on it. To complement the other ingredients and to make our Nutella well-rounded in flavor, we need to season it with some salt. Season it to taste with some sea salt or any other type of fine grain salt. Give it a good mixer to add it in. Make any final adjustments as needed at this point. Even though you've eaten half of it because you were taste testing it, wink, wink, transfer it over to an airtight holding device like a mason jar or use whatever you have on hand. Ensure you don't leave behind any of that delicious goodness. Eat this stuff on some pancakes, in oatmeal, in a peanut butter Nutella sandwich, or just with a spoon out of the jar. Whatever you decide to do, just enjoy. 
All right, now that our homemade Nutella is done, let's give it the old taste of roux. So looking at it, it came out nice and aesthetically pleasing. It's super smooth and creamy looking, and also has that deep, rich chocolate flavor that makes it look extra tasty. Just so you know, since it is an all natural homemade Nutella, it's not gonna have all those preservatives or the thickeners in there like a store-bought one will. So once you make it and let it hang out for a little bit, you can't really see, but all that oil is gonna come to the top so it'll slightly separate, which is totally normal and fine. All you need to do is mix it together to thicken it back up, which is totally fine. So let's give it a shot. Let's try it with an apple now. Yeah, it looks good. This stuff is super delicious. That first flavor that hits your palate is the roasted hazelnuts, which are super tasty. And in the background, you get that nice, deep, rich, chocolatey flavor, which pairs really well with the hazelnuts. And I think it's perfectly balanced as well. It's nice and chocolatey, but it's also super rich from the hazelnuts. We get a bit of sweetness from our powdered sugar. Then that salt helps counterbalance that sweetness and it plays really well with the chocolate flavor and also with the roasted hazelnuts. Then we get just a hint of that vanilla extract as well. Texture wise, it's nice and smooth and creamy and just coats your mouth with all that delicious goodness. Overall, this stuff is definitely worth making. This stuff is super simple to make and it's going to be way better than the store-bought stuff because it's not going to have all that extra junk with the preservatives and all that nonsense and it's not going to have nearly as much sugar as that stuff as well and it's the perfect comfort food to have around the house maybe you're craving some chocolate so you eat a little bit of this or you can use it to make some desserts or it reminds you of your childhood or any other great memories in your life so you eat some of this there's endless opportunities with this stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching. And I gotta figure out what else I can put this on. Maybe some strawberries or in some yogurt or on some ice cream or make some crepes, which sounds super tasty as well. So I gotta go figure that out. So uh, we'll see you on the next one. Schmoove, schmoove. It's slightly chocolatey, 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 chalk, chalk. It's the roasted hazelnuts, hazelnut. Any of those extra preservatives Preserves of Bezis. Hazelnut. Hazelnut. Again. Nostalgic chocolate sauce. 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 Man, you suck at this. Turn off.